Yes, here we go. It's a tricky one here. David Templin, how are you doing, mate? I'm not too bad. Thanks, Thanks very much for yourself. coming. Ah, oh, no problem. Thanks for having us. Need to say the band, it's magnificent. Uh, I know, I'll give Russell Cowie the, the benefit for that one. Who's um, Russell Cowie? Over in the West End. Oh, you gave him a wee pub? Good. Yeah, right. okay. You're trying to get a free Hopefully haircut. Hopefully get some money off that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pair, proper pair, isn't it? Yeah, um, it was one of the boys I used to play with. He had got it and just because my hair's quite thin, so, um, I just thought <laughs> I'll, I'll try it, see if it makes it look a bit thicker. So I've just stuck with it ever you since. You know what you say, mate, curls get the girls, innit? Exactly. <laughs> um, right, on to the old career. <clears throat> Started at Steny. Back in 2005. <sighs> no big clubs came in for you as a youth now. I was actually, well, I was at Aberdeen, um, pro youth, and I get a le release from there, sorry. Um, it says I was too small, so... That old, that yeah, old chestnut. That old chestnut, yeah. so... Yeah, after that, I went back to boys' club, and then that's when someone I knew was at Steny, and he took me in for training and just uh, signed there and done well. So did Steny like a youth team? Yeah, um, I was under 17s when I went there. Right. Was it 17s? Uh, 17s. Um, I had started well. Scored 12 and eight games or something. Right. And then that's when I get put into the first team. So was the first team manager just watching a youth team game and seeing how well you were doing? I think it was just, at the time, my manager, Chris Hillcott. Obviously him and the manager had been going back and forth from how the young boys were doing. And yeah, I got put into the squad one time. I thought I was just going to help out the, like, clean well, the boots and stuff. And yeah, it. pretty much I thought I was doing that. And turned out I was on the bench that day. And uh, yeah. Came on at 2 0 down and we went 3 2, I scored as well. So. Did you, huh? Yeah, that Were was me. Were you being nervous going up the first team? I wasn't too bad, as I say, because I thought I was going to just help with the, the kit and all that type of stuff. And yeah, so I didn't have time to be nervous, to be honest. Um, I didn't really think I was going to get on, especially at 2 0 down and yeah, the gaffer flung me on. And then what, you just kept replacing the team after that goal? Yeah, that was it. Then I was on the bench every week after that. Right. Uh, do you get help, you know, coming through a youth academy? Yeah, it was at Steny definitely helped. Um, I was I was playing with obviously men at that time, and I was like a stick insect. I was so thin, and yeah, it was just I think that helped me, grounded me as well. Um, some of the boys there as well were, were hilarious. Yeah, yeah like um, boy John Paul McBride that used to be Celtic. What a player, mate. Unbelievable. Yeah, a great player. One of the best players I've yeah. ever played with. Um, so he used to always help me, like. He was like a, a father figure at that time in terms of it would always help me and because he'd been at Celtic, he would just give me advice constantly and but they were a good laugh as well. I remember we were going to training one time and the boy Paul Murphy, he had his box van. So he used to take us through and it was Paul Murphy, boy Tommy Sinclair, John Paul McBride and a guy Joe McAlpine. So there'd be two in the front and then two in the back. In the back of the van? They used to tie up the, the boy Tommy Sinclair. They'd tie him up <laughs> and then stop at the lights when there's a car behind them. And he'd open the doors if he's been kidnapped. <laughs> and then Paul Murphy would just drive away like rapid. People behind must have been like, what the hell's going on there? So yeah, just stuff like that. It was a good laugh. So would they take there. you in straight away, huh? Yeah, because as I said, I used to drive with them and they were like... Just as I say, they were bonkers, right. so it was just uh, it was a good laugh for them. Well, when did you first hear uh, Hearts interest in you? Um, it was Campbell Money at the time had said to me, um, and literally it was the next day I was there and signed. And yeah, I didn't really, I would heard there was loads of teams coming to watch and um, watch like coming to see all the games, but I didn't know what uh, what teams I was. So yeah, it just kind of came last minute. The next day, that's that signed. See, before you left, Steny, was boys, the older boys like John Paul would, would they say to you, listen, you could go and be a right good player here? Yeah, JP used to say that to me all the time. Like, that's what, he used to always just give me advice and in terms of if I was to sign with a full-time team, he used to always tell me what to expect, what to do, and yeah, he was good that way for me. Because he, he kind of messed up his career, didn't he, with the way he acted, so would he try to put you away for doing that? Yeah, pretty much. I think, yeah. as you say, he made the mistakes and... As you say, it was unbelievable. He could have been so much more than what he did. So, yeah, he used to always try and put me in a straight path, basically, and mm. not to deviate. And seeing somebody like that who kind of, he'd probably say himself wasted his career, that probably made you think as well, I don't want to end up like that, playing first any when I'm that age. I want to be playing in the top level. Yeah, definitely, because, as you say, I'd seen how good he was, like, training with him every day. I can remember it was New Year and he didn't turn up. We were in training. 
and Gaffer phoned him like, where are you? And his pals on a drink. Um, <laughs> so I ended up, the Gaffer went to the house to try and get him to come to training. He's like, no, nah, I'm not coming in. So I ended up next, had a game the day after. JP on the bench, nothing each, 20 minutes comes on, puts one in the top corner, that's him back in the team again. <laughs> I'm so just, I was thinking to myself, yeah, like, that's how good he was. Like, he could, like, technically unbelievable. And uh -huh. Still speak to him now? I've not spoke to him in years, to be fair, but, um, yeah, he's, he was a, a great guy. I've met him a couple of times, a character. Uh, so were you buzzing to get a move to Hearts? Yeah, at the time, yeah. I was just wanting to go full time. I think at that time I needed that, um, just in training every day and... Yeah, I think that was a, a massive benefit for me, going to Hearts and the manager at the time, my youth coach, he was brilliant Who was as that? well. Uh, Darren Murray. Right. So yeah, he was really was he good. What was so good at? Just training was enjoyable, but it was also, it was tough in terms of like the jobs and stuff. You had to do all your jobs. I remember there was one time, a few boys were supposed to be on the, like cleaning the, the halls. And one day it was, it was dirty, so that's it got four of them, he had to run around the pitches with a brush above their head, the four of them in a line. <laughs> so the, the rest of the boys, so that was it, and never ever missed cleaning that again. So just stuff like that, you had to, it basically grounded you and uh -huh. you had to make sure you were doing everything right. See, when you signed the hats, were you worried that you would, wouldn't be good enough? Because they boys had been in full time, obviously, full time every day and you'd been part time? No, I... I was just, a yourself? Yeah, I always thought that I was, I was going to make it. I've been like that ever since I was young. I just thought... It was the same uh, people used to always be like, oh, what's your backup plan? If I was like, I didn't have one, I just believed I was going to make it to football. And when I went into Hearts, it was just the same. I just thought I'm good enough and like, they wouldn't assign me if I, if I wasn't. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I just had that belief that I would do well. Obviously, the young boys didn't do the jobs anymore. Did you enjoy doing it? No, you, you don't enjoy doing it, but it's, I do think it does help you. I think, it, as I say, it grounds you. I think now the, the kids are... So if they've made it before they've even done anything yet, some of them not even played a game and uh, yeah, it's, I think that they should bring that back in at teams, doing uh -huh. their jobs, because I think Did, they, they the, get would, above their stations. Uh, would the first team boys abuse you when you were younger? Uh -huh. Yeah, definitely. Um, I remember you weren't even allowed to get near the first team changing room and stuff, whereas now kids are going in all the time and uh -huh. yeah, it's just it's different from back then to be honest. When was your first dealings with the, the first team then? Was it Ivan Ouskis that was the manager? He was a manager when I signed, but I never ever... Met him? Never even spoke to him, no. Did that um, not worry you a wee bit now? No bother? No, because I think at the time I knew I was signing for the youth, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that didn't bother me at all. And they had so many players at that time as well. There was about 20 Lithuanians when so I signed. So what was training like them all the players? I don't even know, because I never ever... I never experienced it until... Who was the manager? I'm not even sure who the manager was when I first started training, actually, but I never ever trained when it was Valdas. No. So I was always with the youths at that time. Uh, um, was there any hesitancy going because of that, so that there were so many players there, or was that, was that no bother on you? No, it didn't bother me. Um, as I said, I had belief that if, if I kept doing well with the youths, then I would, I would get a chance. And yeah, I've done well one season, and yes, yeah, sure enough, managed right. to get in with the first team. Did you miss first team football, though? Um, no, not at that time, because at Steny, my first season, I was only getting like 20 minutes at a time and then playing with the youths on a Sunday as well, so yeah, playing youth football didn't really bother me. Mm -hmm. Right, what I like about you, you're one of the young boys that went out on loan. Was that you that asked to go out on loan or were you told? Yeah, I wanted to go out on loan. Um, it was Rafe and the United wanted to take me and the manager at the time was obviously friends with John McGlynn. So he says to me, look, you've got a Rafe, basically, I didn't have a choice. So, yeah, I went in there and John McGlynn was, he was good as well. I really enjoyed playing football under him and, yeah. what's, what's so good about John McGlynn? Just as a coach, he's, he's good, training was enjoyable, but as a man as well, he's, he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. He's just so into football, everything he does about football. He goes on holiday with his missus, but it's to scout players and he's... <laughs> She's got the cope as Yeah, so I've never... <laughs> <laughs> no high-techs anyway, that's for sure. <laughs> oh, easy, easy, <laughs> but, um, no, he's No, he's just everything about him. He's just obsessed with football and he's one of the, the nicest guys in football I've met. See, as a young player, what, what, was there a coach in particular that brought, really brought your game on? Yeah, I would say it was 
Darren Murray. Um, for you, for you yeah, youth coach at Hearts. What? He was, you stop dribbling so much and maybe pass well, it When I had signed at Hearts, I was actually a striker. Right. Um, I'd played a couple of times away at Stenny, but I actually signed as a striker and he put me out in the wing. Well, um, what did he sign you to put you out there, Jane? Uh, just, I think because I like to, to get art players, like dribble and he just thought that that'd be a benefit, getting one-on-one -on -one with <coughs> defenders and rather than playing with my back to goal. So, yeah, I think that helped and obviously it turned out all right for me. Uh -huh, it made you a few quid moving it to the old wing, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> definitely did. <laughs> uh, when you went to Rafe, how was that playing proper full-time first-team football with like, older guys expecting a win every week? Did you find that tough at first or did you take it straight away? Um, the first month was, was really good. I enjoyed it and then I signed for another six months after that and started to struggle a bit. Um, near the end of the season, I, I wasn't playing. Um, I think I was just, I don't know what it was, I was just, didn't really do that well near the end of the, the loan. So after that, I was glad to, to get back to Hearts. And See, when you're on loan and you're not doing that well, do you start to worry? If you think, I, I can't get a game for Wraith, how am I going to go back to Hearts and play? <clears throat> you do a bit because you're out there to play all the time and, and do well. And when you're not, you're, you're thinking, oh, is the like Hearts manager watching and yeah, as you say, if I'm not playing here, what's he going to think? Well, if you're not playing there, there's, there's no chance of playing here. So mm -hmm. you do think like that, but you just, you know that if you, you do go back, then you just have to, it's a fresh start again. And yeah, you've just got to have the belief that you'll get in again. Would you be a tight young guy? I kind of know what kind of guy. Would you go and chap a manager's door at Rafe when you're not playing at that young age? No, not at that time, no. No, no. it's different now. If, like you'd chap a manager's door, no problem, but yeah, when I was like, I never ever chapped the door to, to John McGlynn when I was yeah. younger. Were you a bit scared of John McGlynn? Yeah, I was just scared of all managers, to be honest. Uh -huh. When I was young, I was quiet, I would never ever... Really? Were you? Huh? Yeah, I, I would, thought you were chirping, huh? No, I was quiet, I would never ever think he chapped my door. I would just get into training and just try and do well and get myself back in. Keeping it down. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Ryan McGowan was on, as you know, your pal. <laughs> And he said when he was at Air, Shabba Laszlo used to think he was playing for Airdrie. Yeah. Would he keep tabs on you and would he know it was Rafe you were playing for? Um, to be honest, I don't know, but I can remember there was one we played with the reserves. Uh, we were playing Celtic at um, still on Albion's pitch. And I remember they came and if they'd beat us, they'd won the reserve league. And came me like Paddy McCall. I was so playing that day, I remember it, still in Albion. Yeah. That's right, so... So you was, remembered Paddy, but you never remembered aye, me. That, that's right. the way it was, right. Right. But I just remember Paddy because I tried to smash him and he was still skinning everybody. <laughs> um, no, so, if he's won, obviously win that day, he's won the league. And I remember it was 2-1 was to years. I think it was the 89th minute. I scored. And then we scored in the 92nd as well, we won 3-2. So we went in on the Monday. And went in for video and Shabalazo. So that is, ah, it's not good enough. You can't lose against them. Losing to one should never happen. And me and Gowser's like, look, <laughs> we're looking at each other like, what's he talking about? We win. And he up, one of the boys told him we win 3 2. And if he had left in the 88th minute and missed it, we had scored another two. He thought we'd get beat. You're just like, but he was with the young lads. He was like, when it was video and that. Like Michael Stewart and that made a mistake, nothing gets said. Soon as the young boys, it was just slaughtering them. Really? Yeah. It was so we did video analysis with the reserve team as well. Yeah, that that time with the Celtic one he did, and uh, that's what it was funny to be fair. Too early, what the fuck? Like, how's is that even possible? I think we get <laughs> we get beat. What did he say when he realised you'd won? Nothing. Just walked out. Nothing. Yeah, just walked out. It was just like, as if, oh fuck, I didn't realise. <laughs> what was Michael Stewart like? Is a is a guy a player? Tough on you. Good player. Um, at the time, he was really good for us, um, but in training, he was a money bastard. And <laughs> at, at times, I was obviously young in that and never really would say anything back to first team players, but with Mike, I used to tell him to shut, shut up all the time because it was just like non stop. <laughs> it's one of them, he passes it three yards away for you, it's a bad pass, it's, it's my fault because uh -huh. like, I never got there. And, yeah, he was bad that way. What about good? Off the park, what about, he was nice. Was he nice to you off the park? What about yeah. who, who, was, who took you under the wing, player wise, first team? When I first broke in, Robin Nielsen. Was he good Yeah, at he was good with me because my first game I came on against Aberdeen and I came on right wing and he was right back so he would always talk to me, talk me through the game and 
yeah, he was good with me. But in yeah. training, he was murder because from that by him, he used to just kick fuck at me. <laughs> right. Was he tough? Yeah, you and know? as a young boy, when that happened, you, you wouldn't get free kicks or anything. No. It was just like a way of getting you to grow up, basically. Uh -huh. Did that used to so. frustrate you, that, how you get treated as a young kid to play with the first team? Yeah, it used to annoy the life at me every day. Like, if you were doing well in training and skinning, as I say, like, can buy Robbie or can buy Egot Johnson, who was quite nasty as Physical, well. Huh? Two of them would just kick fuck at you and you just have to get them and get on with it. You couldn't like, claim for a free kick or anything, so you weren't getting it. So what got to the stage where you would start answering these guys back and start sticking up for yourself? When you started to play a bit more games? Yeah, probably the season when it was Jim Jeffries. Right. Um, that's when I would come out my shell a bit more. Because mm -hmm. um, as you say, I was playing more, more often. So, And there was a few younger kids coming through then as well, so You're a bit older. I was starting to get a bit more experience by playing. Right, I always ask, the debut? As you say, you came on for Robbie Nelson, do you know you were going to play? Um, the Aberdeen one, I, I didn't think I was going to get on. Um, i trying to think, who did I come on for actually? I think it was Kingston got injured. Right. And Shab, it was Shabba Laszlo and his assistant Werner. Do you think he thought you were somebody and, else? No, it was <laughs> so bizarre because Shabba actually quite liked me, but Werner didn't. So the two of them are talking on the bench and Shabba's like, oh, what about Tempton? Put Tempton on. And so can you hear all this? Yeah, but they were speaking in German. You could just hear them saying, like, Templeton, and then Werner's like, oh, no, no Templeton. And, <laughs> and I'm sitting there like, please just put me on and end up Shabba put me on. But, yeah, ended up, I think we went down to 10 men that day as well and got took back half again because Aberdeen were just launching it in the box and I was glad because I'm like, I'm fuck, I can't defend, fuck that shit. <laughs> like in the box, trying to win heaters, like no chance. <laughs> so yeah, I came back off and then I think it was next week we played Celtic and that was the first start for me. See, when he, he took you off, were you, was there a wee bit of devastation there? No, there wasn't at the time. No, because it was... Because uh, I had actually, I'd played well when I came on, so it wasn't like I had been shite and I thought, oh, like That's I knew I had ahead. done well, so um, I was... It wasn't like I was, as I say, I was shite and came off, like getting dragged. I was actually, I'd played well, just because they were like Hoping launching it in. Uh, so, the week after that, before the Celtic <clears throat> game, leading up to the Celtic game, did you know you were going to be playing? Was you no. in shape? Were you in the team there? I had no idea. Um, when did you find it? Just an hour and a half before kick-off. How was um, that? Absolutely shite in it. <laughs> I would say that's the only time in football where I've been nervous. Um, Is it? It's the only game. Because um, it was my first start and I was 60,000 and Celtic could still win the league that day. Right. I think Rangers were playing Dundee United and it was a game that Rangers won 3-0 I think. Right. And um, yeah, so because it was full and it was, they were singing, it was noisy, I was just like, wow. Can you hear that like, in the dressing room? And yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was proper bricking it. Can you remember the warm-up or that? Is it all a haze? No, I can't remember. Haze, sorry, I, no, even the game, I can't remember much. I just remember there was one in the box, like our box, where the ball came down and I've tried to turn and Nakamura took it off and nearly scored and I was like, oh, fuck. I was going to get slaughtered if he'd <laughs> scored. But that's the only thing I really remember about the game. I remember, remember Marion Kello. He was nothing each, but it could have been about 10 now that absolutely battered us mm -hmm. and he had an absolute world there. See, before your debut, would, what would, would, there be like, would there be encouragement to you or was it just go and get on with it? Uh, just really go on and just enjoy yourself, just play the way. Is that what you said, going into, who's yeah. that, Lazo that would say? Lazo, actually? yeah, uh -huh. just basically, just had to, said obviously just to, like, it was very tactical, Shavu Lazo, so in terms of defensive side, he'd tell me to do all that correct, and but once I had the ball, just to, just go and play. Just to be positive. Because he gets quite a bad name, Lazo, did you find him quite, quite good? With me he was, yeah, as I say, he, he quite liked me, so... I had nothing, he gave me my debut and I had nothing bad to say about him, he was, as I say, he was good for me. And what team did you support growing up? <laughs> Actually, I grew up a Celtic fan. Right, so to make your debut there was quite a big thing, I Yeah, at the time, yeah. But I wasn't like a, a massive fan, I never went to any games or anything, so it wasn't like, like the way, like, try to think, Johnny Russell and people like that uh, were uh, massive fans, uh, like, uh, I wasn't like that at all. Right, okay. I uh, just want to ask you about a few of the older players. Uh, Larry <coughs> Kingston, good player, eh? Frightening. Like, so good. Was he? Yeah. What, in training or just every game? Just, just so good on the ball and stuff. Would like, he have been the best player in the first team at that time, would you have thought? Yeah. Him and I think Bruno was there at the same time as well. Bruno Aguilar. Right, OK. Portuguese fella. He was frightening as well. Like, technically very good. Um, played in, like, the 10. Uh -huh. um, just pick up pockets. So clever on the ball. And, yeah, what they, was Kingston they, like as a guy? 
Because they're quite like really nice guys, guy, yeah, they? yeah, brilliant guy. I got on really well with him. Um, he was another one when I was, I was obviously just coming into the first team, and he would always look after us. Um, would he, right? Yeah. What about the older boys? Would they, would they take you on nights out? Yeah, I remember we beat Hibs one time in Josie Goncalves after it. We went into the changing room and stood up on the seat, and he's like, right. Everybody tonight, we're all going out, it's on me. We were, I was oh, a, like a young lad and I'm like, looking, sure enough, went out and I went to the bar to get a drink and went and bought a drink. He came up to me and said, what are you doing? I told you, it's all on me, there's a tab, just order what you want. He He's paid for man, the full night out. Did yeah. you take the piss? No, I did a fuck, cause, <laughs> but it still must have been a good two or three grand he paid anyway. Top man, For the it? full night, yeah. yeah what a great guy. guy. Uh, another one, Lee Wallace, because he was a y youngish, but he played yeah. so many games at that time. How was he as a player and as a guy? Brilliant player, uh, He's brilliant guy as well. He's quite, it's like quiet. Um, He's got a dry sense of humour, yeah, I was very, in the Scotland team. Very dry it? sense of humour. He's quite quiet until you get to know him a bit. And but as a player, I, f I thought he was brilliant. Like uh, especially for me on the left hand side when I played in front of him, it was, yeah, it was brilliant. Good hearts team, mate. Very good, yeah. Um, I think we finished third maybe three years in a row or something mm -hmm. um, and he Europe twice and yeah it was brilliant great, great team great bunch of boys as well See Tyne Castle for opposing players quite daunting see as a young boy playing for Hearts is it just as daunting or is it, is it, is it good to play? Playing? Brilliant I loved it Did you? Yeah I, I think as you say because it, the crowds are close so see when you're if you're doing well you can hear them shouting like when you've done something well and you just hear everything, it's all like it gives you more confidence when you hear them like praising you basically. Uh -huh. so, yeah. uh, how good are the Hibs games? Yeah, good as well. I used to actually prefer playing at Easter Road when it was a Hibs game. Why? I just loved playing against the away fans like when there's more of them and I think as well we've done well there as well. Um, and especially the game that I scored there as well. It was, yeah, just when you see the fans and hating you and yeah, brilliant. Uh -huh. Who did you used to have on toast in the derbies? Any player that you used to like playing against? Um, remember there was one game actually against Ian Murray. I kept scanning him and then I was a couple of times just booted me up. Yeah, you were dirty, weren't you? Yeah, I was one and nutmegged him and then he just smashed me. Uh -huh. But yeah, it was good playing because he was like old school. He would, as I say, kick, kick you up and down. So I like playing against people like that. Because if you got the better in them, you knew you had them when they started like lead on you. And the Je Jim Jeffries comes in. Was he much more old school than, than say a Shabba Laszlo? <coughs> yeah, proper old school. Um, but you're a bit worried when an old school manager came in and you're a young player and you think maybe you'll go with tried and tested boys? Um, no, I was just more worried about pre-season because I'd heard about <laughs> what you should do for pre-season because I'm, I'm a terrible runner. Oh, yeah. Like, see long distance stuff. I hate it. <laughs> and he used to take his tetley and run up holes and sh stuff like that, and oh, it was it was horrific. What the hardest you've done? It wasn't till probably this season. Nigel uh, Clough, too, yeah. too old school, or, uh, too different, very different styles, but two of them were horrific. Uh -huh. Would Jim Jeffries pull you when he first came in and said that he liked you as a player, or was it not no, really giving actually, much to I never started the season under him. Um, I think it was Andrew Driver on the left and Suso Santana on the right. Right, me Suso. Huh? And Suso got injured, I think it was in November, and we were playing Hibs, and I came in then. And then it was since then, that's when I, I played all the time. What's he good at, Jim Jeffries? Just training and stuff was fun. Like, you do like usual possession, small sided games and stuff, but on Fridays he would have like young v old competitions oh, for yeah, cakes yeah. and stuff, so and shooting competitions where it was like partners. I was always with Rudy Scatcho, so I, I knew I was never ever going to lose because <laughs> he's, he's got the best left foot I've ever seen in my life. It's ridiculous. So just stuff like that. And obviously, as I say, the losers would have to bring in cakes. And so he just made everything fun and everybody. That's why it was such a, a feel good like dressing room. Uh, who would usually win, young or old? Always old, with always uh, one. Uh, we're old, good. Because he likes Scatcho, as I say, he's, his finishing was a joke. That's what my next question was, returning already Scatcho, was he, was he better than Kingston? <sighs> I think Kingston was a better player, like, in terms of on the ball and all that, but Rudy would just, like, if the ball was out on the left, he would be sitting over on the right somewhere, just waiting, ball going to the box, and everything would just seem to fall to him and uh, just score. It was like, you could just, 
not get involved in the game at all, and then all of a sudden he scored two or three goals, and it's like, where the fuck did that come from? <laughs> Just like so uh, good, honestly. So like wee possessions and that maybe not great, but in games, big games, you always come up with big like, goals. In training that possession, that was fine, we get on it, but it was in games as if he just knew when he stayed away, he would just drift into areas and he just knew that it would drop to him. It was like as if he just had this knack for where it was going to fall. Did he help you as well? Because he was a wing wide player as well, wasn't he? Yeah, Rudy was, uh, he was a nice guy. He used to talk to you all the time and, and try and help you. And, and as I say, I used to be the one that would do the finishing with him. So. Yeah, it was, it was good for me, even like finishing, I'd always try and tell us where to put, like how he had to, where to put it, and mm -hmm. yeah, it was good that way. Uh, the Jets known for his um, going through people after games, did you ever get it? Yeah, uh, <coughs> and Billy Brown actually, it was Billy <laughs> Brown brilliant also, together, yeah, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> but it was November, December, I got Young Player of the Month under them, and then we played Kilmarnock in the January, and came in at half time, it was 0-0, and I thought I had done okay. Billy Brown. You, you little c The fucking honeymoon period's over. <laughs> fucking get your ass in here. I was just looking at him like, what the fuck? I was thinking I'd done well as well. Like, fuck, no. That was that slaughtered. Uh -huh. And that, then does Jeffries come in even more? Or no, he, he sat back that time, never really said anything. He just let Billy go through us. Uh -huh. and, but were you but scared of anything? I wasn't at the time. See, because I'd been doing well, I was like, I just felt like I couldn't do anything wrong. Like, I was flying and I just had this much confidence. And, and then that just... That gave me a kick up the arse because uh, yeah. I think I'd got comfortable. Because yeah, thirty-five appearances you made that year, did you then start? Because I've seen you playing. I think you're quite a money player. Is that what? Did you start to try and then demand higher standards of players and start demanding more free players? Yeah, I started to, as I say, I came out my shell more when it was when I started playing more. And yeah, I'm, I'm money. I just want the ball all the time. If, mm -hmm. I, if I don't get the ball, I'll moan it. Whoever's passed it to the other side or whatever. Like, and did, did Jim Jeffries like <clears> that on you? Jake. I'm not sure actually, um, but I think it was just probably Michael Stewart and that rubbing off on me, <laughs> um, got me a bit more near. But as, as I said, when you start to play more, you start to, to get a bit more confident and a bit more experienced and you, yeah, you feel like you can chirp up a bit more. Uh -huh. Right, your favourite guy on this, that's been <laughs> on me, big Kevin Kyle, talk to us how much of a character is he? As he calls you, David Templeton. He calls me Timps. Timps, that's Timps, it. Timps. Timps. Um, Timps. Big man, brilliant. Uh -huh. Hilarious. Doesn't uh, care, does he? No, he doesn't give a fuck. He, he just says what he feels. Uh -huh. um, he's always like that, even at Hearts. Like, even with the, the managers and that, he would, if they had a go at him, he would just be back at them and stuff. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Also, I was quite young then, I'm just looking, thinking, just don't say anything, don't say it. Nah, he's fucking having a go uh -huh. back at the managers. But him and, him and Jeffrey's got on, didn't they? Yeah, they, uh, I think he's had them at a few teams. I think obviously Kelly, Kelly as well, as well yeah. aye, and yeah, big Kyle. I played under him all the time. Would he and pipe up in the dressing room in that Kevin Kyle? Yeah. So you, you younger boys, not as well. Would he kind of get on you? Yeah, definitely. If you didn't put a cross into him, he'd, he'd moan at you, and yeah, he's just have a go at everybody. He didn't uh, get. He's just the way he is. He just speaks. His mind it doesn't hold anything back. No, the big time shots but, are brilliant, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what is it? You played the when you played the Premier League? Yeah, when he was at Sunderland and that. Uh, he, he did just to get that one as well because I watched him on my Gauza and then I watched Kyler and he's like, I didn't say that, but uh, he, he definitely did. did. <laughs> uh, he, he was having himself. Was he a good player? Yeah, he was good. Good for me because um, when the ball went up to him, you knew it would stick with him. Um, so I could then make runs off him or even if it's going up high, I can run in behind. You know, he's going to win most things. Mm -hmm. So he, he was good in the air and stuff and. And he was another one that would always talk, like always talk you through the game and, and help you as much as he could. So he was good. good but see, fun. when you've got a big guy at that plane, do you feel like as a winger, maybe you can't take people on as much, he just wants you to get the ball at your feet and cross it in the box? No, because at the time, Jeffries told me when I got it, just go at the full back. He's like, I don't care if you lose it nine times, that one time you go by him, could be the, the time that we get a goal or whatever. So. That's but, brilliant. And Tyler it? would never moan at me for that because the gaffer had told me to just keep going at them. So. As long as I, when I did go by, I would try and put in an area for him because you knew that he would win most things in there. Uh -huh. That's brilliant for Jeff, just telling you every time you get to go to the... Yeah, that's why I think I was playing my best football when I was there because I just had, I just knew that no matter what I'd done, it was never going to really moan at me because he wanted me to do that. Uh -huh. Brilliant. So you must have been devastated when you got the sack the next season, eh? Yeah, I was gutted. Um, as you say, because I'd played 35 games, I think, uh -huh. under him. And yeah. Did you expect yeah. it to be coming? 
No, um, I was actually, I was out and got a message from Hart saying, like team meeting at Tyne Castle at, I think it was like half one or something. Hart's the club's got a mobile? Uh, I think, was it? Yeah, it was a, te a, like a group text, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, just saying like, have to come in for a team meeting and usually when that happened, it was usually a sacking of the manager because there was been that many. And um, yeah, we went in and there was a new manager standing there. What was, uh, what were the older boys, what was their reaction to Jeffrey's getting sacked? I think they were probably just used to it, like... they uh -huh, seen it before. In football, you know, it can happen, like... But for the younger ones, it's like you've not really had that, like... Mm -hmm. the manager, I think, we finished third under him and... And then he gets sacked, but that was just the way it was under Romanov at the time. Did you speak to him after it, Jeffrey's, after he'd been sacked, did you? Phone or text? Um, it just, it was... He just said basically, he came to the meeting and just basically said that that's him, he's finished and like it was a pleasure working with his and all that type of stuff, like, and that was it. Mm -hmm. Did you hear many dealings with Romanov? Um, just once, and it was, fuck, it was weird. <laughs> because he didn't speak any English, it was the year that I left, or the year before I left, sorry, he wanted me to sign a new deal. So he came in with his interpreter and it was like basically just so me, him and his interpreter sitting there. So he would speak in Russian to the interpreter, then he'd speak to me in English, then I would just go back and forth. Like, uh, I don't have an constantly. interpreter. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, but one of the, he's, he's like, when he was talking, he was saying about Messi, Ronaldo, stuff like that. And I'm thinking, what the fuck's he saying here? <laughs> so then the guy's that to me, oh, so if, if Messi or Ronaldo, no, he says, who's your, like, your favourite player at Messi and Ronaldo? And I was like, oh, I like Messi, the way he plays and stuff. So then he came back and says, oh, so if Messi had a team, would you want to sign for his team? And I'm like, I'm looking at him like, what the fuck? He's trying to offer me a new deal here and I'm, if, if I say I would sign for Messi teams, they're going to fucking so try and uh, need a deal or whatever. And I'm like, what the fuck? So that's basically what went on about. And I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm happy here. I'd rather stay here and stuff. Cos I was like, I don't know if he's trying to stitch me up here or not. I was like, fuck, it was bizarre anyway. So what was the outcome of the meeting? No, no, no deal? He ended up, didn't he offer this? He didn't put the offer there. I ended up the next week to put an offer in, which I didn't accept. And then that was it. Like, nothing else ever again. And you never spoke to him again, then? No. See, cos under Romanoff it was quite hard times at Hearts. Who would be the ones in the dressing room that would keep it funny? Who would be funny? Who would be the jokers? And who would, would the slag, like, what was going on and stuff like that? <sighs> Yeah, at the time, no one knew what was going on whatsoever. Like, like we weren't getting paid, and then all of a sudden, you'd get a hundred pound in your bank, like two and a half months later. And because <laughs> I think if you go three months without getting paid, you can just leave. Uh -huh. But it's a breach of your contract. But we didn't know that at the time, and it was like they put a hundred pound in, so it went down as you had been paid hey, and stuff. Uh -huh. But you used to get guys like David De Boer. He used to come in some mornings, like. Oh yes, we've been paid, so then the boys are like, oh, have we really checked their accounts and nothing? And you'd just be laughing. <laughs> but I was thinking, that's alright for you, you're on about fucking eight grand a week or something. There was boys there, I think there was some boys that were really struggling, like at the time. Were well, boys they, not going off for net though? Some boys? Yeah, some were raging, but there was... They'd speak to a lady that worked there, and, but it wasn't like... She didn't even know what was going on. It was coming for Lithuania with Romanov and the guy that worked under him. So then he'd come in like two months later, being like, oh, there's no funds just now, hopefully we'll have it for next week. And then he'd disappear and then you wouldn't see him again for another month and stuff. You just, you didn't know what was going on. And mm -hmm. that's the thing that the guys, like the players found hard, like the fact that no one told you what was happening. Mm -hmm. See so if they come in like, look, they're struggling just now. We'll let you know in two days what's happening or I'll just keep you updated, but you're only getting updates whatsoever. Paolo Sergio then gets a job after um, Jeffries gets sacked. First impressions of him? Good, nice guy. Um, smart. The only thing that we hated at the time when he came in was he took away our day off midweek, so I know <laughs> we've been, worse, I know we're in six days a week <laughs> doing shape every day. Did so. none of the boys say, like, pull him up for it now? Nah, you nah, can't really say it. The manager's got the say, hasn't he? Uh -huh. so. Yeah, the boys weren't too happy with that because it just became a bit of a drag at times, but... I would be the same at Swindon, every day it gets to you, doesn't it? Uh, uh, even especially though, when you're not getting paid, mate. Uh, I, well, to be fair, I think when he came in, we were getting paid then. I think everything was back to normal when he came in. Uh -huh. um, but I was... 
taking that day away kill us. Are you a bit excited to work with like a foreign manager because you've been a technically good player, do you think he'll like me? Yeah, well when he came in he, he did like us straight away, so... Would he, take, would he pull you over, pull you aside and tell yeah, you? Yeah, he would speak to you at the start of the season and stuff, um, and I seemed good and... He was very good tactically, he would work, like everyone knew our jobs. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we done well that season, obviously won the Scottish Cup final. Just because everyone knew exactly what they were doing. Yeah. Used to do shape and be like the starting eleven would work through phases of play, and then the next eleven would do the same. So that if somebody came in, then yeah, they knew job. exactly. Yeah. So everybody was yeah switched on. One game he wasn't a good tactically. It was a five 0 defeat to Spurs. Oh. <laughs> How was that? Were they frightened? Yeah, they were ridiculous. To be fair, um, I remember I started that game and. After it, people were like, oh, why did you not kick them and stuff? I'm thinking, you literally couldn't get anywhere near them yeah. to even kick them. I remember I was going to like press Kyle Walker. He's playing it into Van der Vaart and then he's popping it wide with one touch. And I mean, it's been shelled in at him and I'm just thinking, what the fuck? Like, they were so good. <laughs> I think we were, three, you I think we were three down after 12 minutes. Best player you played against Kyle Walker? Hardest? Directly. Uh -huh. At the time, yeah, but... <clears throat> Yeah, I'd probably say him, because um, he was just so quick in that as well. I remember there was one, Dawson was stepping out and Walker had went f forward, and I knew he was going to play it to him, so I managed to cut it out, and he was about 20 yards away from me. And I'm thinking, I'm 1v1v one one Dawson, if I get by him, I'm going to score. Run at him, cut inside by him, next minute Walker just takes it, I'm like, where the fuck do you come from? <laughs> it was question, just yeah. lightning. Yeah. See, when you play against a team like that, do you think, I've, I've got miles to go to target to the top level here? Yeah. Once you play players like that, you just see like the levels basically. You just know that you're nowhere near that level and that's where you want to get to basically. Uh -huh. But despite the first leg, no, no, in the second leg, what, what was different in that game? They kind of take their foot off the gas? They rested players. <laughs> 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 they had obviously scudded as the first leg, so it was game over. They brought in Harry Kane, the young Kane played, didn't Yeah, he? He, was, he was a young lad at the time. Tom Carroll, Good Townsend. Tom Carroll, uh -huh. So, like, Obviously rested all that. How was Kane that? Players. You remember it? Missed a penalty. Did he? Yeah. Uh, you could see that he was decent, to be right. fair. Um, won a penalty. Jamma saved it, to be fair. Good save. Uh, did you get a shit any shirts for the two games? Just the first one, Kyle Walkers. Oh, did you get yeah, Walkers, didn't so, you? Yeah, I usually just swap tops with like, whoever I'm directly against, basically. Uh, did Walker take yours? He did, actually, aye, which was... Something in his bedroom, wasn't it? Aye, throwing darts at it, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right, so after that Hearts game, obviously you said you had a good season, mm. got to the Scottish Cup final and you were dropped for it. Yep. Did you know before that you were going to get dropped? No, I got told an hour and a half before. Mm. Basically put the team up and I think that's the thing that annoyed me the most. Like, if they'd told me the night before, then I would have had time to take it over it, basically. But I was sitting there annoyed the full time. Um, See, seeing, sorry, seeing training in the week leading up, because usually he does a lot of shape, so were you in the team to start? No, so I knew I wasn't starting, but I thought I was going to be on the bench. Right. Um, and then I was just bombed completely. So yeah, and I think the annoying thing was, I knew we were going to beat them, because Hibs were terrible at the time. We'd beat them a few times that season, and I just thought I'm going to miss out and getting a medal here. Because if you're, even if you've played every round before, you still it's don't get a medal, you know, so... I think that's something that I was gutted about because I knew we were going to win. So did you say, see when he named the team in the subs and you went on, did you say anything? Nah, I just... Sat raging. Uh, sat raging, Do you think it was him that made that decision or the owners? <clears throat> uh, I think it was probably him because I had been out, inju uh, out injured, I had torn my groin. Um, I think it was like February, March. And I had just been back two games before it and I played and I didn't play well when I just came back. And I think that's probably why I wasn't involved. Because he, Sergio said that it was your attitude that led to leaving you, do you disagree with it? Yeah, I did disagree with that. Um, I seen that when I, I left and stuff, but I got on well with, with Paolo, like really well. Um, I think the thing he was on about was, every day after training, you used to come in and you'd go in the indoor and you had to do core. Uh -huh. But at the time, I had just torn my groin and then I had a double hernia as well. So I used to come in for training and just go in the physio room and no do the core. Right. Because obviously the hernias and... I think he used to get annoyed with me for that. He wanted me to go in and do the core, but did I couldn't you, do it. Uh, did you not explain that to uh, him? I said that to him, but I think that's the thing he thought had an attitude problem, but it wasn't. It was, I ended up getting an op at the end of the season. Uh, did you speak to him after the final about, no, no, about being left it? Nah, I just got smashed. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, just... Could you still enjoy it? Yeah, I still enjoyed it, because I was, still, I was still happy for it, all uh, the boys. Like, do you know what it's like? like 
scouts on some of the estate way and stuff. He's just won it and scored in the final against Tibbs. I know how much it meant to him, so yeah, I still enjoyed it. Still went to Tyne Castle and yeah, I got steaming. <laughs> but see, when you wake up the next day, is it pure disappointment or huh? Yeah, it's just the fact that you know you, you never get a medal. Um, when you played previous rounds and stuff and yeah, that was frustrating. Does that still get to you now? Yeah, it's still, yeah, it's still annoying. I still wish I'd been involved in that day. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I've brought on it about it a couple of times, but even like the week after that, would you say to Serge that why am I not, what, why was I not involved now? No, because I think, well, after that, that was us finished and then he was gone the next season as well, so I never really spoke to him ever again. Right, so okay. I didn't even get the chance to ask. So see, when something like that happens, do you think I'm done with the club, I'm, I'm wanting a winner? Uh, nah, not really. Yeah. Um, no, nah, I was happy there. Um, just obviously frustrated that I hadn't been involved in that. But as I say, we come in the next season, there was a new manager again. Uh -huh. And it was John McGlynn, who obviously I liked, so it was like a fresh start again. Uh, how was the club when you returned for pre-season then? Fine? Yeah, fine. Everything was, was all good. We'd, obviously, Paolo had left. Um, I think a few players had left as well, so it was like a fresh start and try to rebuild. I think a lot of players had left because of the um, money situation, had to get wages Messi's off the ball, basically. Messi's club came in for them, huh? Yeah, <laughs> so pretty much, yeah. Did John McGlynn bring like, a mere Scottish feel to the, the club? Well, I think when he came in, as I say, like a lot of the foreigners had left because they were on big money, money huh? so they had to get rid of them. So it was just left to... There was a few Scottish boys and a lot of young boys, so it was, that's, he was having to rebuild, basically. And would he say you're going to be the main man this year? Um, no, he never said that, but I, I had a feeling I was going to play because, obviously being at Rafe, I knew he liked me and I got on really well with him, so start this like pre-season started well and, yeah, start of the season I started really well. Uh -huh. And you only had one year left on your contract? At the start of that season, did you think you would be at Hearts after that season, or were you, were you thinking to yourself, I need to play well and get, get a move here this year? No, I, I knew there was interest. Um, How did you know that? Just agents? Well, in the January, Bristol City had tried to sign me. Right. Um, on the last day of the window, actually. I was in Edinburgh, and basically says, like, take, my agent says to me, take, like, clothes with you for... Like if an offer gets accepted, you need to fly down and obviously sign and stuff. So when it came to the summer, I thought there might still be interest. And but the the Rangers thing that was, yeah, you know, that came out of the blue. I didn't really know about that. See, when Bristol City came in for you, why did you want to go on there? Um, yeah, I wanted to go to England. To be honest, that was what I always wanted to do. I wanted to go down there and, and see what it was like and test myself down there. And I think if I'd went at that time, it would have been good for me. Uh, and no, being on it, it was a lot more money in that as well, eh? Yeah, it was at the uh -huh. time, yeah, as well. Obviously, I'd pretty much knew what I was going to be getting if I went down there and stuff. And But just Hearts didn't accept the offer. They wanted more money. Uh -huh. Is that hard to keep playing when, you know, you could have got a move like that with more money and then you need to go back to Hearts and, and you tear your groin? How hard is that for a young player when... <sighs> You know, you think what you could have been earning and now I'm on the Hearts team, I'm injured, is that, is that really hard? Yeah, it was at that time, I think, when I had got the injury and stuff, because I had got that injury as well. We played Motherwell and I had been struggling with my groin for ages. I actually thought it was the hernias and says to the physio, this isn't the right and stuff, but Paolo came up to me and says, look, I need you to play. I was like, right, OK, so eight minutes in, I had a shot and I just collapsed and I was like, what the fuck, that's not right. The physio was like, it's a hernias, go back on. Played another 30 minutes, I was like, nah, that's, that's fucked, like, I can't play anymore. Mm -hmm. Got the scan, I tore my groin. So, that, I think that was frustrating because, obviously, the, the gaffer had asked me to play through it. And I ended up playing through it and making it worse for myself, because I ended up missing, I think I was 10 weeks, and then miss out in the final. And, and all because so stuff like, asked you to Yeah, play. because, yeah. So, stuff like that was frustrating. The things people don't see to as a footballer, mate, everybody yeah. thinks it's great and stuff like that. Aye, everybody you... thinks it's rosy and it's not. Would that have probably been your times. hardest time as a, as a player, that, that wee period? At hearts it was, yeah. Uh -huh. As I say, because the feeling I miss now on, on winning that. And when you see how the boys were lifting the trophy and, and you don't get a chance to do that. So, uh -huh. yeah. Right, tell us what your thoughts are when you drew Liverpool in the cup. Another, did you think another Tottenham? Yeah, I thought it could be another scudding basically because <laughs> obviously Gerard and all that at the time and Suarez and just think, wow. But they came the first leg and they didn't have Gerard and Suarez and that there, they left him home. And See, when you've seen that, did you think you've got a chance here? 
you still think it's going to be tough, like, you still expect him to be really good. But we actually done all right that game, and it was Webby had scored an own goal, he was unlucky with. So going there, 1-0, you're like, then you think, oh, we'll get a, get a chance here, like, because there weren't anything special. It wasn't like the Tottenham game where you couldn't get near them, like, we had chances against Liverpool, first leg as well. Mm -hmm. So going to the second one, you think, right, we've got a chance here. It was Brendan Rodgers the manager, yeah. wasn't it? Is that just his first year? I think it was, well, yeah. Charlie Adam played as well, didn't he? Yeah, I aye, Charlie played, uh, he played. Shirt, it. home game there? Did you get a shirt? Um, no, the away game I got one. I got right, Carragher. Okay. Carragher, did you? Yeah. Huh? Right, we'll come to that. Uh, the away game, obviously you score. Amazing feeling scoring at Anfield. Yeah, I still say it was an own goal, but somehow I managed to get it. Uh -huh. um, Who cares, mate? I know, but no, it was amazing. Um, how good is the atmosphere in that, yeah? Yeah, it was brilliant. Uh, it was really good, and especially because I think it was like the 80 odd minute. Like, we never expected to be not on each at that time, to even have a sniff of taking it to extra time. And because mm -hmm. they had Gerard Suarez playing Sterling, they had a good team out then. And um, yeah, so to score and seeing the Hearts fans, it was, uh, it was unbelievable. Was, was Gerard good? Yeah, he was just chilled. He was in first gear, I think. He was just like spraying passes a bit. Mm -hmm. You could tell that. If you wanted to take it, I stepped it up. Uh -huh. And then Suarez scores like an equaliser, sorry. How, how sickening was that? Well, that's that's what I mean in terms of stepping it up. It's like we scored and then he just thought, right, fuck it, we're going to score now. <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. Uh -huh. Suarez done the left hand side. I think he megged Aliukas and then scored. Well, uh, how were the other pool players when he was after it? Were they quite complimentary? Or I can't, was it I can't remember, to be honest. No. I, I, think, I think they were probably just glad to be through. I think if. They'd scudded us then, it would have been different, but the fact that they just got through, I think they were just relieved. Relieved, uh huh. Yeah. What did the manager say he's after the game? Proud of Yeah, I think the fact that we even went to Anfield and scored, so like, that was a big, big thing. And even, as I say, nearly taking them the extra time with the players that they had was, was frightening. See, when you play a game like that, do you think, I need to play well here because there'll be a lot of people watching? Especially when your contract's up in the summer? Yeah, I did at the time. I was thinking if I do, because you know it's on TV, you know, people see it. So I was thinking if you do well, then. It can attract interest. And it did, mate. Rangers. Is <laughs> it last minute? Very, yeah. Uh, we when did you first hear of their interest? Well, we played on the Thursday night and we didn't travel straight back up. We stayed down there. So we stayed and then we trained at Liverpool's training ground Melody, on the yeah. Friday. And it was after that when we were coming back up. I basically got a phone call from the agent saying, once you get up, like drive straight to, I was to meet him at the Hilton and then we'll go to Murray Park because Rangers had an offer accepted. I was like, well, didn't so even know that. That was the first I heard. And what was your initial thought? Just like, I, I didn't even really know. I was just like, what the fuck? Like, because as I say, I hadn't heard anything. I didn't know anything about it. And it's just a case of, right, offers accepted, you're gone. Uh, and did uh, the man at Hearts manager like, speak to you about it? Or? No, he actually, <laughs> he phoned me after I signed the next day. And I thought it was Lee Wallace trying to take the piss out now. Because, <laughs> like, Waldo used to phone people, like, and put on voices and kid on he was, like, Craig Levine and stuff. And <laughs> so I thought it was actually him, kid on he was John McGlynn. And I, cause I didn't have the gaffer's number at the time. And I was like, oh, fuck off, Waldo, and hung up on him and stuff. And then he texted me saying, I swear, temps, it's John McGlynn here. And I just wanted to say, congratulations, he's the move and all that. And I'm like, is that actually the gaffer? So I. Text Lockie and I, Gary Lott, I was like, what's the gaffer's number by the way? Text me, I was like, oh fuck, it's the manager. <laughs> Had to phone back and apologise. I was like, I thought it was Lee Wallace. <laughs> brilliant. See Gary Lock, how's Ryan McGill loved him? Man. Did you like him as oh, well? Oh, brilliant. What, how, what, what sort of, just a good He's good just banner. so funny. Is yeah. he? Oh, Can you see from the outside, you didn't see that about Gary Lockie? The stories and stuff he's got, like years ago when he played, he's... Yeah, what a laugh he is. He's is he a great yeah. guy? Still speak to him now and again, actually. Uh -huh. See, um, when you went to sign for Rangers, where'd you go? Ibrox, Murray Park? Murray Park. Met Ali McCoy? Uh, yeah, went and obviously met the gaffer. Got there, I think it was about half seven or something. In the morning? No, at, at night. night right? uh, okay, uh, so late in my eye, so... Yeah, I just went straight to Murray Park and... Is that a buzz, meeting Ali McCoy and, and speaking to him? It was, yeah. Um, cause obviously, Grew up seeing him playing and even 
daft things that you used to watch him on uh, and stuff Fucking like that. So, it, it? <laughs> <laughs> no, but obviously he's funny and stuff. So you were. Uh, he is a funny guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. You were looking forward to meeting him, and uh, just, as I say, it was even funny when you met him. So who was that? You, your mum, and dad. No, it was just me and my agent that went. Oh, was yeah, it? Right? I didn't have time to take him there, so it was just a case of straight there. Uh-huh. So. What um, you know a bit weary about the division they were in? I was, yeah, but at the same time, Hearts had like kind of forced me out as well. They had says to me, look, if you don't sign, you're never going to play here again. You'll train with the youths and just stuff like that. And I was just kind of like, well, it's either go with the youths or go to the Rangers and, and play. And, yeah, so then I was like, I'm going to go. What, what did McCoy, how, what was McCoy's like the first meeting? Did, can you remember anything specific he said to you? Is it- no, I, do you know, I can't actually remember much. I think he was just like making jokes and just the way he always is. He's always quite funny and always bubbly and carrying on. So I think, I think it was just the same, to be honest. Uh, did he try to convince you to get up the leagues quick and back into... Yeah, he obviously said all that and showed us around to like the changing room, like all of Murray Park, showing us like all the facilities and just obviously trying to get me to sign, which... Which I was going to anyway. Would you would you would you speak to your mum and dad before you signed, or was it just you and your agent and t- just me and my agent? And yeah, was it? yeah, it was one decision. It's nobody else's, so yeah. I was just like, yeah, I wouldn't have took him else anyway. No, and uh, Ryan McGowan was there. Yeah, he did. Th- you, did you think he was signing? Well, at the time, as I said, I didn't even know that he was. I bet he'd been meant to be coming. I, I didn't. Well, I he's not on the bus ju- the same the same bus. He's not talking yeah, to each other. Yeah, we would never even told each other. It was just a case of like. I just get so I never told them when I got phoned. I just kept it myself, and because I didn't know what was going to happen. And then in Murray Park, and it was a gaffer at the time, Coyster. He's like, "Oh, I've put, we put an offer in for Ryan as well, and that's been accepted." And like, he's on his way through just now and stuff. And I was like, "What did really? you say? What you did that for his hopeless?" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, "It's kind of brutal." <laughs> but see when he got in the third division. Then. <laughs> <laughs> well, see when he got there, McGowan, would you? Would you just like? Go away for McCoy's net and say to each other, are you signing? Well, the, when he came in, I was just like, obviously, like, f- I was wanting him to sign, obviously. And um, I was dealing with contract situation, whereas he was getting shown about. So I only got to see him for like two minutes and that was it. And didn't even really get to speak to him about it. But after it, obviously phoned us and just said that like, he, was, he never signed. Uh, were you surprised that he never signed? <sighs> Not really, just purely because I knew that he really wanted to play for Australia and it was come up to a World Cup. Mm-hmm. So he had it in his head that if he signed there in the third division, he was never going to be in the Australia squad. Right. So knowing how patriotic he is for his country, I knew that he wasn't going to sign. Uh-huh. That's, a, that's an act on that patriotic yeah, I know. <laughs> a bit, Exactly, but it worked out well for me. We went to China and got all sorts. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's loaded now. So proud day for you thought, so when you signed for Rangers? Big club, obviously, massive club. Yeah, massive club. Um, as I say, the facilities, f- fans, going to Ibrox, walking out. Because I remember, even when I was at Hearts, we played Lee Wallace, had obviously signed for Rangers, and we were playing against them, and walking out to simply the best, and I was just thinking, wow, that's unbelievable. And Waldo was at to say, well, it's even better when you're walking out as a Rangers player to it. So when I first walked out to that, I so, like, I can see what it means. It was is, just having the fans on your side was uh, Is the atmosphere amazing? Uh, yeah, it's brilliant. And as I say, it's my first game against Elgin and there was 50,000 fans and I'm just like, wow, like uh, in the third division. So see, when you heard the Rangers intro, would you quickly phone Lee Wallace or was that after you'd signed? Uh, I spoke to him after I signed in that. And he just um, said you love it? Uh, yeah, just basically, I uh, just saying how much I'd love it. And obviously Ian Black was there at the time as well. He phoned us as well, so. Uh, right, your first rain- your first season at Rangers, sorry. What was the atmosphere like around the club at that time? Obviously, with all the stuff it's that good. had gone. Was it? Yeah. Um, Who was that? Down to McCoyston, coaching staff? McCoyston, Durante. Kenny McDowell. Kenny McDowell, guy, funny Kenny. as well. Uh, the three of them were funny together, so they made it a good atmosphere and it was good. Some of the players there were a good laugh as well, like Kyle Hutton. Like, he's, he's daft, isn't he, Kyle Hutton? Yeah, so thick. So he was a good laugh there as well. Um, yeah, it was just, as I say, a good bunch of boys and mm. training was enjoyable. What, uh, what was McCoy's part of like with the slaughter boys? Yeah, just obviously always bring up how many goals he scored and um, just how good he was, basically. Uh-huh. So. Would, he, would they join in, Durant and McCoy's in it? Um, it would join in like the wee boxes, him and Kenny McDowell. Uh-huh. Um, and it would always just try and stitch players up, like uh-huh. never go in the middle. So if they stick, like, 
if it's a bad pass or whatever, they'd be like, oh, it's your fault you get in, and you'd have to go in and shit. Like, just a good laugh. Um, and even like, after training, we'd go up and play like Killer Pool, and the gaff on that would play, and obviously he's got arthritis. So his hands like that, and he, he used to put, like, hang me shot. He's like, I'll use my bridge hand and like, just, just have <laughs> a laugh. Himself, and, yeah. So he'd take the piss with himself and that. And, yeah, we used to just stitch each other up when we were playing killer pool and that to get each other out. So, brilliant. Uh, was it surreal playing for Rangers and you're playing teams like Elgin in there? It's a bit weird. It was, yeah, because um, you know that for them it was it was massive. You know what I mean? They were coming, playing in front of fifty thousand, and whereas I used to play in front of maybe five hundred and stuff. And you know, for them it was a cup final, so they were going to give everything as well. And especially going to the away grounds, it was it was harder than what you would think. Oh mate, I know if I played them, it's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Eh? Would McCoy's make a joke about going to like some of the away, away grounds and stuff like that? Uh, do you know, I can't even remember to be honest. Yeah. Um, do you remember sitting in changing rooms and thinking, what the fuck? Yeah, but I was just there. I think it was worse for like Lee McCulloch and all that. Yeah, who'd never like obviously we used to doing in the Premiership playing in ridiculous stadiums and stuff, but I had obviously done it with Stenny. Um, I'd played in at East Stirling, Cowden Beef, all these type of places, so I know what it was like, but you had the guy Cribari, Brazilian guy, who'd been at Lazio. I think he came and thought, what the fuck? Like, he was like, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> was he? Yeah, so it was a culture shock for him. Uh, how did you think you done your first season, 17 goals? I actually thought I'd done quite well my first season. Um, second game in, I got injured, so I missed eight weeks, I think. Um, done my ankle. But yeah, I think I got 17 in 24 games, something like that. So obviously, we're expected to get that playing against lower level teams. But as I said, like some of the games are harder than people think. They just expect you to go out and win 6 0 every game, but it was never like that. Uh -huh. See, although McCoy's funny and pat, but could he crack? Uh, not really, he never, he wasn't really one to go mental. It was more Durante would go nuts. Like, Durante would, yeah, the gaff would come in and kind of let you have it amongst each other and then Durante would just slaughter who he felt needed slaughtering, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a bit more, he was the, the louder one. Do you think they found it tough? Obviously they played in great Rangers teams and managed great Rangers teams. Do you think they found it tough? So maybe, not yourself, but the standard other players that were playing for Rangers, did you think that got, that got to them? I don't know, to be honest, maybe. Because, as you say, they were used to... His first year there, like Steve Davis, Naismith, he had, like top-class players. And, and then obviously going down to the third division, they lost all those players and had to bring in like some young boys through and bring in some of his, his own players. And, Obviously, it wasn't the same finances as what it was just his first season, so maybe it was difficult for him. Mm -hmm. um, and as I say, like for the other teams coming, they're giving everything they can. Uh -huh. uh, you made your way up to the championship, and then McCoy's left. See, just before he left, could you see that the stuff going on in the background was starting to affect him? Yeah, definitely. I think <clears throat> I think it took his to uh, took its toll on the gaffer. I remember we were playing Queen of the South on the Friday, and I was driving in with Hutz. And it was on the news saying it had handed in his resignation. And then, so we were like, fucking hell, like, didn't expect tax with a game that day. And then he took us in, he says, oh, I've not handed it in. And we ended up, we get beat. And then the next day it came out that he had handed it in and obviously left. And we were like, like what the fuck? Like, mm -hmm. So he just told us that to obviously try and concentrate on the game. But there was so much going on off the field that I think he was really struggling. Were the boys, uh, did the boys like him? Yeah, it was, as I say, it was like great laugh. He was one of those managers that, like, when you're not playing, you want to hate a manager. Like, if, if I'm not playing, I, I really... Find like, it hard to I, like I, it, I find, But with him, you just, you could not not like him. Like, he was, it was hilarious. Uh -huh. it was, it was would, only he, one. would he tell you, like, how much it meant to play for Rangers and stuff like that? Was he quite good at it? Yeah, like, like, the freedom, obviously the gaffer, Coach and uh, Durante, they used to always drill it into you, but it meant, like, even when you were walking in to Ibrox up the, the marble staircase and that, it would always go on about that and yeah, just drill it and everybody said it's like what it meant to actually be at that club. Uh -huh. Obviously you've played for a big club in Hearts, but is that pressure of playing for Rangers that, that much harder? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think 
<clears throat> because I didn't do as well as obviously I wanted to when I was at Rangers, I never played as much as I wanted to either. So when things weren't going well, you could hear the fans like, you knew that like if you gave the ball away, you were going to get slaughtered. So it made, I think some players, it made you like a bit nervous when yeah. you were on the ball show. I think, fuck, if I give this away here, I'm getting 50,000, like, going nuts at me. And it was, yeah, it's hard with times like that, like the, the expectation. It's like you had to win every game, no matter what. A draw is not good enough. Mm -hmm. It was, yeah, frightening. Is that hard to do when you come for a team that's not expected to win every week, just to turn that on? Yeah, well, to be fair, at Hearts, it's still big expectation. Yeah, like you're still expected to win all the time, but to a different extent. Uh, with Does Rangers, it affect you off the pitch as well? Yeah, it's, it's hard done. to have a normal life outside that as well. Like, even going in nights out and even like, I remember I put a picture with a beer on my Instagram and getting fans right, you shouldn't be drinking that. And it's like, you can't, you can't have a normal life sometimes, like getting out drinking and be your pals or whatever because you end up getting abuse. Uh -huh. It's frightening. So see, when you see players that play for Rangers now, do you, do you like, right, respect them? How, how well, how much they need to deal with her? Yeah, definitely. Because um, yeah. it is, as I say, it's a lot of expectation that you, you have to deal with. And like, as I say, they're doing well this season, but they lose one game and then that's it. They're, I've seen stuff with Tavs, who's been flying, but he'd one bad game one time and he was getting abuse. And I'm just thinking, he's been brilliant all season, but that one game, that's the one that they remember yeah. most. It's expensive the club. Yeah. Uh, Kenny McDowell took over and then Stuart McCall followed. Uh, how tough was that? It was the playoffs you just got beat for Motherwell, was it, wasn't it? <coughs> yeah, um, I wasn't involved in it actually. Um, I'd been bombed for the squad. Why was that? I don't know, it was a weird one with McCall. Like, I started well, like, was enjoying it under him and then I'd done a, an interview. Um, it was about, it was like McCoy to McCall. And I kind of get stitched up. I'd said about McCoy, it's like, oh, I'd said, oh, I would like McCoy to get the job, it's been good, he'd been working on different shapes. And, and they're like, oh, did the manager not do that? And I was like, oh, no, because basically we played the same formation, so we knew what we were doing. Mm -hmm. But they'd made it out that I was slaughtering McCoy when I wasn't. And I was like, and then after that, I played Queen of the South. And McCoy's like to me, right, I want you to play high left, don't come back, just stay up. If you get back to halfway line, stay there, don't, like, just cheat, basically. Uh -huh. I'd done that, and two goals came down, the, like, that side. And then I got hung out to dry, got took off, and then never got in a squad again. And did he slaughter you after again? Never said anything, just didn't involve me ever again. But it was, it was him that told you to do that? Yeah, and I was like, I've got made out, it was, like, my fault, basically. Uh -huh. And now you've copied his band, then? <laughs> <laughs> I said, there's no ginger. <laughs> How, uh, what was Big Mosh like? Was he a screw? I played against him when he was at South End. He's a mad man, isn't he? Absolute nut job. But, n like, he's two sides to him. He's, like, so nice. But you just know he can flip. Like, I remember we were on the bus going to a game. And I was quite prone for, like, fucking about throwing sweets at people and, mm -hmm. like, just, you know, watching, hitting them in the head with it and shit like that. So, I was just sitting there one time and Big Mosh, and he's standing there tapping me with a sweet, like, yo, yo, I'll fucking kill you. And I'm like, what? What the fuck are you on about? He's like, you hit me with a sweet, going crazy. It's fucking me, Barry McKay across me, like, Billy, it was me that hit you, like, <laughs> shitting himself. And then that was it, fine. But you just knew that uh, he, he would have fucking killed me as well. Like, what was the dressing room like after that Motherwell game? He was punching guys and all that, was it? Well, it was the same thing. As soon as that game finished, that was it. We were finished. And Mosh, and he literally got in his car and drove straight to uh, France. And that's the last you've seen of the, the big man? I fucked off. Scary, eh? Uh, Mark Warburton followed. Were you excited <clears throat> about his appointment? Because his Brentford team yeah. did some great stuff. Yeah, they obviously played good football and him and David Beale were coming in. I thought David would be good as well. Obviously, he's a legend at Rangers. Like, having played against him as well and done well, uh -huh. I thought he'll... Take care. Good chance they'll like me because I've played against David. And sure enough, when he first came in, he pulled us in and says to us as well, he's like, look, you're the best player here, you're going to play for us. Like, it's a fresh start for you, everything. And I was like, oh, brilliant, like, what I needed to hear, basically. And I did, I started, and then three games in, get injured. Uh -huh. The old injuries so, are killing you, mate, I know, especially that one, because I was feeling good at that time, with obviously the gaffer saying that to me, and yeah, it gave me confidence. How good is coaching? It's good, his training was brilliant, pre-season, yeah, it was the best. What was, what was just the most stuff? Football. Uh -huh, yeah. Just football, really. Did you done, like, one set of runs, like, without the ball, 
and that was it. The rest, running you done was with the ball and, and also you know yourself, it's so much better like, than just running around a pitch non-stop. Mm -hmm. So that uh, was enjoyable and even like the training in terms of possession, small possession box, everything was so good and tense and yeah, enjoyable. Yeah, you've never got that injury. Played under Warburton more often and, and maybe still been <coughs> at Rangers, uh -huh. I think I would have, I would definitely have played more often. Um, as I say, I started the season. Um, he, as I say, he told me he liked us and I would play, so I had that confidence straight away. But obviously, that injury killed me. Did you me know it was a bad injury? I know it was my medial straight away because I had, I'd done it at Steny before, um, so I knew the feeling, um, and yeah, I just I knew I had tore it straight away, but. It ended up worse than what I actually thought it was. Mm -hmm. how, how, how hard is that for a young football when you get a serious injury like that? It's brutal. Um, people don't realise, like, especially with this one, because I didn't really know what it was. It, like, so I think it was 21 months all in. Yeah, but the worst thing was not known. Like, usually when you get an injury, it's like, like your ankle ligaments at six weeks, you've got a set rehab, basically, you know you're going to be back then. Whereas with this, because we never knew what it was, I never knew when I was going to be back. It was like, just keep trying things, try this, try that. And I, that was probably the worst thing, just mentally. What was the lowest point of that 21 months? Um, probably before I got the second up, when I really didn't know what it was. And I was just like, right, I'm going to retire. What was that, when was that 27? That was, that must have been about, the... That was after, that was 13 months in, I think. Right, just had enough? Yeah. I was just like, because I'd tried injections, tablets, all different stuff, and I was just, I had an op as well, and didn't know what it was. And yeah, I just got to the point, I was like, well, I'm fucked, like, I literally don't know what it is, so mm -hmm. I was just like, I'll just chuck it. What was the manager that said? Nothing, because I had left Rangers at oh, the time. Right, uh -huh. My contract had ran out, and it was like, right, and that's so how I, in the house? that's how I was going to chuck it because I was like, I'd, I've got no idea myself what to do. Like I've got nobody there to help me, or, and uh, it was my agent. It's like I'm going to see a specialist in London, and as soon as I seen him, he's like, I think I know what it is. I think I'll be able to sort it, and sure enough, he did. So did you got to the stage you were looking for a job and stuff like that? No, not yet. But I got to a point I would have had to because. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was, I was honestly going to chuck it. Uh, it's easy to see why young guys can suffer from mental health and stuff like that. Yeah. It's not really tough, isn't it? Well, that's what I was saying. I was looking back now, I was depressed. I, I didn't realise at the time, but I was just sitting in the house myself, curtains closed, watching box sets and mm -hmm. drinking, basically. I was Really, huh? Yeah. Living was, on your own or with your family? No, with my wife, but right. uh, she would be at work and that, and I would just be, no what to go out of the house, basically. I was just sitting, getting drinks and watching the telly. And was there, a, was there a stage you actually told somebody you were depressed or you just knew yourself? No, that's, that's just what looking I'm back. It wasn't until I was back playing and looking back at it, I was like, fuck, I was in a bad place. Like, I wasn't going out with my wife and wasn't taking her for dinner or nothing. I wasn't doing anything, like, just mm -hmm. sitting in the house. God, uh, did you get help for that? No, did no. You, so what, what sprung it out you? Yeah. How did you get out of it? Just getting back to football, just enjoying it again. And when I went to Hamilton, it was just, like, as I say, enjoying football and then after it, I'm, I'm getting out again and then just enjoying life again. Uh -huh. So, yeah, that, that's when I realised, I was like, fuck, I was, I was quite bad. Was, it, was there a worry that you would never get <clears> another <throat> club as well? Yeah. you've been it for so long, uh -huh. Yeah, it was actually hard to get another club. Um, but your agent was banding you about and they... No nobody would touch me, no. Because, because I was out for 21 months, they thought oh, it was a, what, a really bad knee injury, but it, it wasn't as bad as... If I'd got the op that I got that fixed it, I'd have been out for four months. Right. But instead, it took that long to get it, and then I ended up training myself. I was actually coming into Hamden for treatment, which was good. That helped me. Um, and I was using indoor in here, trying to do fitness work myself. And mm -hmm. yeah, went into Dundee United, they wouldn't touch me. They wanted me to come back the following season and sign. But at the time, I was still needing to train somewhere to try and get fit. So yeah, it was hard to get somewhere because everyone thought it was fucked, basically. How good was that feeling then when Hamilton told you they would take you? It was good, it was, the chairman had phoned me and, and just says, look, we want you to sign, you don't even need to come in and train and impress, like, just come in and just, like, train it, like, we'll get a contract, you sign oh, it, yeah. you're a player, and I was like, 
that was good because I knew that then I could just go in and be relaxed. I didn't have to try and impress and yeah, they were worse than going on trial, mate. Yeah, well, I've not done that yet, but <laughs> um, hopefully I don't have to. <laughs> but um, uh, fair play to Hamlet taking you on, eh? Yeah. Was that quite emotional what, when they took you? Took no, I was just happy relieved. and relieved. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, as I say, I had tried to get places and couldn't get anything. And yeah, just when they like, let me want you to sign, I was just like, thank fuck, I can like take my time to get get fat and mm. and I did that. I played some twenties games and I, I ended up in the squad like two weeks later, coming on for like ten minutes, then twenty minutes and, and just building it up and then the following season I was pretty much playing most games. And then did you find yourself being a happier person when you when you did you start taking the misses out? <laughs> Definitely. Start buying the rollies and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> so no, nah, just um as I say, like yeah, I was getting out again and just enjoying life again, taking my third drinks or whatever and yeah, just Mad put me in a good place day, again, uh, I, uh, I, I is, mental. So you must have a soft spot for Hamilton now, that you've, you're doing so well now, but a lot, of, a lot of gratitude to Hamilton for what they've done. Yeah, it. definitely. I'll always be thankful to Ronnie McDonald and obviously Martin Canning um, for taking the chance, because um, obviously it's worked out well for me, and yeah, I'll, I'll always be grateful to them, because if I hadn't got in there, then who knows, I might not be playing just now. Uh -huh. And did you hear an appreciation for the game when you're back playing the SPL for Hamilton? Because you've obviously been out for so long, did, was there less pressure on you just go and enjoy yourself again? Yeah, that's the way I looked at it when I got back. I just thought, I'm just going to go out there and enjoy myself. I'll try try tricks and stuff again and just play like I played when I was a kid, basically. Because I'd been, because of the fact I was nearly going to retire, I was thinking, can I get any worse if we lose a game? Like, Don't I take it I so would, hard. I, I wouldn't get myself too down because I used to get home and be depressed if we lost a game. And yeah, I just thought, I'm, can it be like that? I just need to go out and enjoy it. And I think that's why I played well when I was there, because I was just enjoying football. Uh -huh. Who were the good players at Hamilton? Who did you enjoy playing with there? Um, Ali Crawford was really good. Doing well at Doncaster. Te uh, well. Technically, very good player. Um, I think he needed that move to a team yeah. that will play a bit more football, because we went a bit direct at times at Hamilton and just miss him out. So I can see why he was struggling a bit the last season. Um, try to think. If you do get him ready, just. Money bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He's been there for years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good lad though. Good club to play. Uh, and then, move to Burton. How are you enjoying it? Good, uh, really Except good. when you play Man City. Yeah, that was, fuck, that was, that worse was tough. Worse than Nah, that was well worse. The first game was well worse. They were unbelievable, man. I, like, just, I didn't, I didn't start that game, but I remember just sitting watching, like, the first half, and I'm just thinking, wow, they're so fucking good. Like, the wingers are just staying so wide. Fullbacks are coming in to get on the ball, and David Silva. I don't think he even broke sweat. I don't think I seen him sprint the full who, game. Who was the best at the ball? Silva. For me, I thought Silva. Yeah, because he was just like drifting in areas, and as I say, he didn't have to sprint. It was like he was just jogging about and just getting in areas where he couldn't mark him. He was just so good. Uh, and did you get a wee, did Guardiola come and speak to you or anything like that? Yeah, I, s I actually said to him after it. I said, oh, it was a pleasure. Like, obviously first half watching that and he was like oh no the pleasure was all mine and I'm like nah mate trust me it was mine <laughs> <laughs> fucking watching how good you was well it's fucking brilliant um, like, even a young lad Phil Foden says to his after it he's like by the way he's like like even though it was 9-0 like he was actually done well like Rotherham came last week he says it could have been fucking double figures against them uh -huh. did we Foden say that didn't he quite good and what about the plans for the future State Burton or would you come back to Scotland well, I've got another year after this season at Burton, um, so I'll obviously stay there for the remainder of my contract and, and see what happens. But yeah, I'd always come back to Scotland because I've always been used to it here. I just wanted to try England before I finished. And just quickly, an Nigel Clough character, huh? Yeah, old school, like ruthless. Um, no fucking about with him. Uh -huh. We played Scunthorpe away, and it's quite funny actually. It was in the cup, we were getting beat 2 1. And I think it was the last minute I've cut inside, and I must have been about 25 yards. I've hit a shot, and it's been out of the bar. I end up losing. I come in at full time, he's like to me, uh, fucking you, you shoot for that distance again in the last minute when we're trying to equalise. I don't give a fuck if we go down to 10 men, I'm fucking bringing you off. I was, fuck, scared to shoot again. <laughs> in training, just passing the ball all the time. <laughs> Brilliant. Tim, thanks very much. Brilliant. Pleasure. Thanks for having Talk us. Cheers. Man.